Let me just say, first of all, I'm not a young chippy. I come from the civil rights movement. And I remember the days back in the 60s and the marches and the Freedom Riders and the stands. I was born in Richmond, Virginia. I lived there during the segregation uh, of the South. I came to Newark, New Jersey in 1955. And I always remind my colleagues in the Senate that they don't understand my roots. I remind them that I came to Newark, New Jersey at the age of nine years old. And that was in 1955. And if you go back, and that was January 1955. If you go back a few months to 1954, it was Brown versus Board of Education. And so I could read and write at the age of nine, so you understand it, that I, I know what segregation was all about. And so I used that often time on the floor of the Senate to express my disenchantment and my concerns about social justice, economic justice, environmental justice, and civil rights and equal opportunities. Because I understand what it took for us to get to where we are today and the sacrifices that Dr. Martin Luther King and so many others made over the years. With my face turned to the sun. Good leadership knows that you have to stand up for what's right and when you stand up for what's right, oftentimes you're gonna have pain and you may even have regrets, but sometimes hindsight is better than foresight. And so I'm happy to be here because my life and history has been rich in encouragement. It's been rich in terms of what our ancestors have done for us and those who have come before me. But we're in the same era right now where the rubber band is stretching, where poor people are getting poor, the wealth is getting wealthy, and the middle class that's still in our communities and elsewhere can't afford to take care of the wealthy, making them wealthier, and deal with the poor too. You know, oftentimes as an elected official, and this reflect all of us, or many of us who are elected officials, certainly reflect on the legislative black caucus members because I travel with them um, throughout the state off and on. But it, it's good when you look at young men like yourself and young women, and they are doing well in life, some doing better than others, some doing reasonably well, and they remind you, because you forget, you know, people grow up, they kind of change in terms of their, 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 their structure, if you will, the mm -hmm. face, you know, sure. some have hair, some lose hair, some wear glasses, some pick up weight, some lose weight, and they remind you of the little things. Um, and that's why I always tell the people, our viewers in particular, mm -hmm. that little things in life that are positive mean so much to young people in growing up. They may not say much to you, um, but they, they do make observations, you know. I mean, just to hear, and I've heard it before, that he is a young man who's a businessman now, once again owns six companies, and we'll talk about the companies, paid attention, out of all the things he paid attention to, he paid attention to my ankles. And I just thought that was in my afro, you know. But it gave him inspiration, I would like to think, um, that maybe one day he could be a police officer doing something positive, uh, maybe one day he can share. And so don't be afraid to, to make sacrifices, um, don't be afraid to be outspoken, and definitely don't be afraid to stay bonded. And so we are important, I'm gonna say it again, we are important, I say it again, we are important to all people. The work we do on behalf of women and minorities is positive for those who are not minorities. Um, when we grow the economy, it means that we grew up for everybody. When we talk about voting rights, it means that we're protecting the rights of everybody. When we talk about being the voice of our children, um, we're talking about being the voice of all children. And so the name of the game for us is social justice, economic justice, fairness. We are important. And don't ever let anyone think to tell you otherwise. And we talked about it, but I knew in my heart there was time for black elected officials whom you elect or you appoint to school boards, et cetera, come into the room at the same time. Come into the room to understand and, and, and accept the realities of the black struggle, the black history, and what we have gone through, what our ancestors, our parents, and others have gone through, and recognize our moral responsibility as elected officials because 
During the time of the black migration, it was not black folk making these decisions. The black migration made it possible for us to be in these political offices that we hold, but we're the only black people in the country that can make policy. No black person sitting out there can make policy. I can, she can, they can. So that gives us an awesome responsibility. Our responsibility is for everybody, but there's a particular responsibility for black folks. And we have to accept that and not be ashamed of it. And we have to talk about it when we come to the table with our colleagues to negotiate a quality of life and the destiny of people. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone. If I did, I'm not gonna apologize for talking about our history. We talk about everybody else's history, but black history is not the month of February. Black history is everyday history and will be to the day we die. Thank you very much. We are honored to be joined by one of the senior members of the Senate in New Jersey, going on 34 years in the legislature. That's correct. Still loving it? I'm doing the people's business. Yeah, that, you that's... have to love that. Stand up, take my people.